beautiful tropical fruits. Succulent stone fruits. Or gorgeous seasonal berries. I think I need a minute to ponder this. When I see all the fruit, I'm thinking that fruit's more for baking, and I'm definitely not a baker. This is sort of out of my element right now. Well, your second advantage is you don't have to cook. <sighs> Great. So, Trevor, is it going to be the tropical fruits, the stone fruits, or the seasonal berries? I feel that I have a great idea of what's going to throw the largest proportion of them for a loop. I want to make this elimination challenge as hard as possible. I choose. All right, the games are about to begin. Trevor will not be cooking in this challenge. But in the pantry, you got to choose the ingredients that all of you will be working with. We showed him three beautiful ingredients. And he chose stone fruits. I see peaches, plums, and I think, am I going to have to bake? This is good for me because I would love to bake. Now, if any of you have visions of desserts dancing through your head, you might just have to think again. Because Trevor's next advantage is that he gets to decide what type of dish you'll be making. Savory or sweet? You'll be making your decisions with these. If you hand a home cook a sugar bowl, that means they need to make a sweet dessert. And if you hand them a salt shaker, they have to make a savory dish using stone fruits. Everybody's fate is in my hand. I'm going to make it count. OK, Trevor, it's time to hand these out. Thank you, chef. Please do not give me sugar. Hey, Kim. Thanks for not doing me dirty, bro. Hey, Jordan. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> if Trevor gives me a bowl of sugar, I'm going to throw it back in his face. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Taya. Hi, Trevor. Let's see what you can do with the sugar. I'm not happy at all. You just made my day. I guess I chose wrong then. You did. Hey, Alicia. Hey. Two options left. I'm not sure what to do. Please, Trevor, save some sugar for me. I'm going to go with sweet. Ah. Hey, Alice, I guess there's only one option left. Salt. Now that you've wrapped your heads around this challenge, there is one final twist. Trevor has another advantage he doesn't even know about. Trevor has way too many advantages right now. He gets to save roughly half of you from cooking. <laughs> Either all of the men or all of the women. Oh, my god. That's ridiculous. Jeez. I don't know what Trevor's going to do, but I know he has a soft spot for the ladies. <laughs> Trevor, who's it going to be? The man or the woman? I hope that Trevor saves me. After all, I shared my oven with him. Chef, I'm going to decide to save the men in this challenge. Yes. Oh, my god. At this point, the strongest competitors in this competition are women. And I'd like to see him duke it out head to head. I don't believe that. <laughs> he just wanted his bros to go up with him. It's bro town all the way. We'll just rock it out in the kitchen without you. OK, home cooks, you now have 60 minutes to transform your stone fruit into a sweet or savory dish. At the end of this challenge, at least one of you will be going home. Your 60 minutes start now. Come on, Kim, you got Come on, guys. Go, Alicia, let's go, Kim, come on. Go, 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 go. Only oxtail. Need spices, spices, spices. I'm excited to have the salt shaker. I feel very comfortable working with savory food. Duck, no, I don't want duck legs, maybe a lamb. This is so heavy. I, I need eggs. I like to eat baking, but I just suck at it. Oh, my dear Lord, this is just ridiculous. I'm just not a baker. I'm just not a baker. <sighs> I love stone fruit. If I could, I could eat some right now. <laughs> 
Trevor chose the man. Uh, he's a boy boy. He likes his men. <laughs> Enjoy the rest because uh, I'll take over. <laughs> Sweet is my forte. I am making peach gazpacho, sweet cheese ravioli, and some bacon marmalade. I love to play those sweet, salty flavors. This is a workout, man. Which would be more difficult, making sweet or savory? I think when you think of stone fruit, peaches, plums, automatically you think sweet. For me, savory, of course. Duck, plums, perfect match. I think as a chef, though, you need to be able to do both really well. Whew. My man Trevor there gave me the salt. I'm excited. I want the judges to see that I am more than just a baker. Brenda! Hi, Chef Alvin. What dish is up your sleeve here? Bison tenderloin wow. with a tomato plum gratin and a roasted chili and mustard seed radish and peach. Hear that, Trevor? Do you regret giving her the salt shaker now? We'll see if she can pull it off. I'm confident in my flavors. I'm really looking forward. All right, let's get this going. Let's go, Kim. You got this, girl. I am making a sweet potato puree with a pan-seared trout, and I'm going to make an amazing glaze. I want to show the judges that I can create a beautiful glaze. It's not to be cocky or anything, but I don't think I've ever made a bad sauce. There's a lot going on in the kitchen. I feel bad about Alice giving her that salt. She really helped me to get to where yeah. I am right now. Alice, what are you making? I am making a lemon herbal cod with a nectarine ratatouille and a peach infused cauliflower puree. Sounds like a lot of flavors. Would you have preferred a sweet dish? Maybe a little, but I still have to prove to you guys that I can do this. Good luck. There is no room for mistakes. Somebody is going home, and I better make sure it's not me. I am doing OK. So I'm going to be doing a sweet dish today. I'm making a peach and nectarine crumble with a pecan and toffee garnish. I want to show the judges that despite my lack of baking experience, that I can still put something tasty in front of them. I know how to put flavors together, and hopefully the judges will be able to see that. Well done, Alicia. Good job. Trevor, why'd you do this to me, man? I gave Taya sugar because I know she's a contender. I wish I had way more baking experience. I've decided to make a nectarine sponge cake with a caramelized peach thing. I'm making way too much. I screwed up my measurements. I've never made a cake. I'm totally taking a risk right now. <sighs> the stress is totally getting to me. I'm really scared for Taya. She just needs to stay focused. This does not work. I'm going home. One minute! You have one minute left. Start plating now. Hot, hot, hot. No, my peaches are too hot. It's just going to melt. You got this, girls. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Heads up! Good job, guys. Good job. I made a cake. It just doesn't look pretty. Such a great job, everyone. Now it's time to find out just how successful you were. Miranda, would you please bring your dish to the front? I'm just hoping that they see that I can put savory flavors together. I made a seared bison ribeye steak with a plum cherry port sauce on top of a tomato plum gratin. Miranda, you've kept the bison medium to medium red, eh? Yes. Nice. Delicious flavors. The freshness of the fruit, the tomatoes, the peach, the cherries, they work really, really well together. It makes the bison shine. It is tender, it is nicely cooked, and I think the seasoning is close to spot on. Thank you, Chef. Nice job, Miranda. Today I proved that sweet or savory, watch your back, because I'm here to stay. Justine, you're up next. Please bring up your dish. I'm proud of the dish I put out, but you never know what the judges are going to say. I did a peach gazpacho, and I did a dessert cheese ravioli. Look at that. That's fully loaded.
this really works. <laughs> this is incredible. You have achieved so many different flavors and textures in one dish. Wonderful balance of sweet and savory. It's an original. I've never had anything like it. You should be very proud of this. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Justine. Hi, Chef Michael. Delicious. <laughs> Light, true to the taste of beautiful ripe peaches. You can almost taste the sunshine in those. <laughs> it's astonishing what you've done in 60 minutes. Thank you. I feel good. I'm really, really proud of myself. This is a tagine with a side of herb couscous. What the frig is a tagine? I've never seen one. I've never heard of it. If I live in Edmonton, if it doesn't moo and eat grass, I have no idea what this is. It's a North African dish named after the pot it's cooked in. Now, Moroccan cuisine is all about spice and texture. I know it's very humble when you look at it, but this is one of the most sophisticated dishes you can find. This tagine does not have meat. So your vegetables are the main event. They have to steal the show. All right, time to go to your station. Being in the bottom with these two amazing home cooks makes me very, very scared. Miranda is a very strong cook. Aaron is very technical and he's confident. We're giving you 45 minutes for this pressure test. The vessel for your tagine is at your station, along with all your vegetables and premium German-made Miele appliances. You'll also find 28 spices that are not labeled. At the end of this challenge, the home cook who serves us the least successful vegetable tagine will be leaving the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Home cooks, are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your 45 minutes starts. like beyond me, beyond me. I grew up in a primarily Moroccan Jewish neighborhood, so I've had the opportunity to taste these flavors quite a bit in my life. So the tagine dish, it's an unusual shape to it. It traps that steam inside of it, and it almost creates like a convection. That steam drops down, and all those flavors and aromas get trapped inside of that pot, and they drop back down on top of that tagine. Why is this so freaking hard? The first step would be choosing the vegetables that I want to put into my tagine, because that would then help me make the decision of which spice combinations would work best with the vegetables I've chosen. Uh, I know nothing about tagines, but uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to use some peppers, some tomatoes. I'm probably going to use some pumpkin for a bit of earthiness. The tagine, it's kind of making me feel like the stew my mom used to make. It would feel like a warm, cozy hug. So I will make it an ode to my mom. I'm just going to give it my best and do what I got to do to stay. The amount of spices and vegetables are messing with my head. The more selection I have, the harder it is to pick. This is an opportunity for the home cooks to really show us who they are with the way that they combine all of those spices. By smell and taste and a little bit of luck with a pinch of this and that, I will hope it works out. I'm going to work on a harissa that I'm going to make myself. It's going to be tight making my own harissa, but it's a risk that I'm willing to take. I like what Aaron's got going on. He's definitely yeah. doing that harissa. Yeah. yeah. Aaron, that smells dope, man. How much time do I have? Yeah. Chef Michael. Did you fry off this mix in the bottom of the pan? I did, yes, Chef. I wanted to kind of get a good cook on the onions, and then I added honey, and then I added my potatoes, carrots, and then I'm going to throw some chickpeas in at the end. Is there an overall taste that you have in your mind that you think you'll be able to achieve? Definitely bold, definitely bold flavors. I'm just going with some flavors that I know and then seeing what it needs and adding from there. Good luck in this pressure test. Thank you. Thank you. Miranda. Hi, Chef Claudio. How are you doing? Uh, I'm pretty confident. I know my flavors um, in my tagine are good. I thought I had a good idea with my pumpkin seed. So I'm happy. <laughs> are you cooking with instinct right now or experience? Uh, 
Instinct. Instinct. <laughs> so far in this kitchen, I cooked with a lot of things I've never done before, and this is no different, so I'm just trying to do my best. I'd wish you luck, but I don't think you're going to need it. Thank you, Chef Claudio. Aaron, what are you doing in the blender here? I made my own harissa, Chef. What's in that? Uh, coriander seed, fennel seed, lemon, a whole bunch of nice stuff. Wow. That is delicious. Thank you, Chef. Why did you decide to make your own paste instead of using the spices that we provided for you? There's no cutting corners in delicious food. It'll make a big difference at the end of the day. You ate up a big chunk of time to make your own arisa. I'm hoping that it'll pay off, Chef. Hurry up, eh? Yes, Chef. Remember, get your lid on. Time is of the essence, you know? Just time, 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 time. Aaron is overthinking every single step that he makes, and now he's behind. And he keeps fiddling with the tagine. He should already have that tagine covered. It's got to be perfect. Once that lid goes on, that's it. There's no steam coming out of his pot. No steam. He better turn on that heat very quickly, or else we're not going to have a vegetable tagine. We're going to have a salad. Ten minutes stop! No, it's too much. I have no idea what he's doing. He's putting things in, he's taking things out. The vegetables may not cook in time. I'm confident that there's enough time for those vegetables to cook. I don't eat rice or couscous. Uh, the trick of couscous is, unlike rice, you have to pour the boiling hot water onto couscous, give it a stir, OK, and cover it. Aaron's doing it right. He's steaming it. Every couple of minutes, you have to check on it. You have to fluff it up, because if you don't, it's going to be one hard cake of couscous. I think it tastes fine. I have no bloody idea. I'll tell you, that couscous is only about a couple of minutes, eh? Guys, down here. One minute, you have one minute left. Come on, guys, final push. Good job. Mother of God. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up. Way to go, guys. The tajin is kind of like cooking an egg. You have no idea what's going to happen on the inside, and you just hope for the best. So, home cooks, the hot air trapped in your tajin vessels is still circulating. So, to make sure that all your tajins stop cooking at exactly the same time, we're going to release that steam. Chef Claudio lifts up my tagine lid, and this incredible aroma comes my way. Wow, that smells really good. I'm getting a nice, earthy, cinnamon aroma. I'm feeling confident at this point. OK, home cooks, it's time to taste. Tell me what vegetables you have in here. Some pumpkin, carrots, celery, chickpeas, zucchini. Miranda, you really captured the essence of a tagine. <sighs> that tells me that you have intuition. You understand flavors. You understand how to work with heat. You understand when something's too sweet, too sour, which is a very powerful tool to have as a professional chef. Incredible. Thank you so much. Brenda. Hi, Chef Alvin. I assume in Edmonton you don't see a lot of these things, right? Yeah, don't see tagine, chef. Well, it smells great. You did a great job. Thank you. It's just cooked perfectly. It's not mushy. It's not soft. It's got a little bit of crunch and the flavor is sight. Couscous and the tagine, it's like a marriage. They complement each other. And you did that just right. 
Thank you, Chef Alvin. I'm amazing myself every single day I cook in this kitchen. What vegetables did you use, Tay? I did some potatoes, carrots, red peppers, chickpeas, some apricot. It's got a bright, eye-catching color to it, but it doesn't have a, an aroma to it that says it's a tagine. Tell me some of the spices you used. Chipotle, some turmeric, honey, cumin. I added uh, cinnamon, too. I think, Taya, your spice choices seem to just fall short. You could have gone just a little bit more forceful. Your palate was leading you down the right avenues in terms of taste. And then you put the brake on. Hey, uh, how are you feeling? Uh, I know I'm going home. You know you're going home? Yeah. Why? Because you have to be perfect in a pressure test, and I wasn't. I saw Aaron's, it looked beautiful. Miranda had rave reviews, so. Monkfish, I knew it. Terry and Jennifer are sending me the message that I'm, in their eyes, one of the stronger competitors. I've definitely been sabotaged. Girl, you hacky? I don't even know if I'm seeing hake. Hack? Hake? <laughs> I've never tasted hake before. I've never seen hake before. I don't know where the hake is from. Uh, um... Uh, I'm looking for rice right now. Jennifer and Terry have assigned me British Columbia sturgeon. <laughs> It's a thick, denser fish, so I know that I can cook it the same way I would cook a meatier protein. This is do or die for me. If you get a difficult fish and you know it's difficult, that's like Terry and Jennifer telling you right to your face, I want you out. Oh my gosh, you guys. At this point, Terry and I feel that April Lee has been playing it safe and we want to throw her a little bit of a curveball. There's some crazy ass bones in this fish, that's for sure. Really what's gonna stand out for me here is fish that's butchered properly. No bones or there shouldn't be any bones. Oh Lord, so many bones. Find again! Sorry! Mary is one of the strongest home cooks here. Come on. We're giving Mary the steel hair trout because it's got a lot of tiny bones. Come on, it's there. Uh... I'm making a trout, a brown butter um, cauliflower puree with a nice grilled fennel salad and a carrot sauce. I've got a lot of components. I have a lot going on, and 45 minutes is not a lot of time. I'm already a bag of sweat. I have sole. My dish is going to be pan-seared sole with citrus and soft sauce. Thanks, Jen. This is something like I'd make at home. That's why. She's my Italian sister here, and I want to give her a break. I'm really good about my dish. They gave me the mackerel. I know it's fairly fatty, so I'm just grilling it and pairing it with quick pickle will help tame the oiliness of the fish. I've been fishing since I was a kid. It was one of my favorite activities to do with my father, so I'm feeling more confident than I have in the past. Not only am I not going home, I'm gonna win. I got monkfish, and it's a pretty ugly fish I've never really worked with before. The monkfish has got to be the toughest. That outer skin is like leather. Terry and Jennifer think I'm a beast in this kitchen, and that's why they want me out. They're scared. And you know what? I'm going to show them why they should be scared. I've trained in Muay Thai. I'm a fighter. I'm also a fighter in the kitchen. I'm going to go with a traditional Filipino tamarind broth. This is something that my mom would make for us weekly, so I'm not scared. I'm never scared of anything. 20 minutes! This isn't bad. Not bad at all. Veronica, what do you get? I got the red mallet. My mom loves fish. I cook fish for her all the time. So I'm feeling right at home right now. I'm doing something I know very well. When my mom visits me from Hong Kong, she always requests that we eat at home one day, and I make this dish for her. I am going to do a Thai-style fried fish. I'm going to fry the bone as well. And I'm also doing like a Thai-style sauce for it to be dipped in. Well, this is a Chinese way. I've had many times at Chinese restaurant. You got to be very careful and make sure this part is very crispy because the head takes a lot longer, and this doesn't take very long to burn. I'm well aware of that. I will be holding it with my life. I hope so. Sean, did they give you a whale or what? <laughs> it's a huge fish. I'm making a baked sturgeon on croute, so it's gonna have a pastry element to it. This dish is a little innovative. I wanna roll the sturgeon, make it kinda look like a rose or like a flower, so I need a, a smaller piece that's obviously way too big. I have to start trimming off the filet to get a small enough piece that I can work with. 
Hey there, Sean. Whoa, 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 Sean, 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 Sean. What are you doing? You're destroying a beautiful piece of fish. Yes, I am. Why are you doing that? Because uh, I'm going to cook it a certain way. Why don't you just get a meat grinder and grind the whole thing up? I'm going to uh, wrap it in uh, the shape of a rose and bake it with uh, citrus butter sauce, red rice, and bacon green beans. So basically, you're taking this beautiful filet and turning it into the biggest fish garnish we've ever seen, a vintage fish garnish. Trust me, it'll look beautiful when it's done. It'll look beautiful, I guarantee you. Well, best of luck with that. Thank you. Uh, this dish is a little innovative. Hopefully, the judges will see that in me, and I won't be going home today. April Lee. Hi, Chef Claudio. How are you? Fish out of water, this girl. I couldn't help notice, but you were completely blindsided when you found out that you received one of the most difficult fishes to master. You know, I couldn't even say the fish. I was like, uh, hickey, hockey. I guess they wanted me out. Terry and Jennifer are intimidated by me because I'm a bit of a wild card. They're starting to see that I'm a strong cook. And what is it? What are you making here? It's a delicate fish, and I've got a really beautiful light watercress and radish salad with some really beautiful Asian flavors. All right, good luck. Thank you. Ten minutes. Meat is all about minutes. Fish is about seconds. Seconds make a very big difference when you're cooking fish. Smell it, Jen. It smells beautiful, girl. It is a lot more tricky, I think, than cooking chicken or beef because it is so delicate. Light and delicate. There you go. I'm OK. Not great, but OK. Carrot sauce will not thicken. Cook down, mama. Cauliflower will not puree. Oh, my gosh, I'm so hot. Fire, fire, <gasps> fire. Oh, my god. Woo! Here we go. Fire. OK, Mary needs to just calm down. She needs to calm down. Breathe, Mary. I got it. This is not at all going how I wanted this to go. You've got four minutes, honey. I know. Not a lot of time left. I need to flip it over. I don't want to lose the skin. Look at Jacqueline. Look at her fish. <gasps> yes! Thank God. Beautiful. Veronica, she's deep frying the whole head and spine. If she pulls that off, it could be a winner. I got one of the easiest fish here. I need to go above and beyond. Jeremy is doing a Southeast Asian style dish. He handled that monkfish surprisingly well. I cannot believe what Sean is doing with his sturgeon. He wants to roll it and make it look like a rose. One minute left. <sighs> I'm so happy with this. So freaking happy with this. Whoops! The mess. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. I banged it out, I didn't think I could. I don't want to go home. It's exactly what I want. I just don't know if it's what the judges want. Looking down at this dish, it is not me. 45 minutes is a short amount of time to do something for people that tell you if they hate it or not. So I just don't want to go home. Now we're going to taste all of your dishes. First up is Jacqueline. I'm elated. I have never produced such a beautiful dish in my life, and I can't wait for them to taste it. It's a grilled mackerel. And the sauce is an almond puree. The beets I cooked in beet juice, roasted tomatoes, and then there's a radish pickle. It's a tricky fish to cook because it's so thin. Perfect. It's a beautifully balanced, beautiful to look at dish. Honestly, it looks like we're in a restaurant right now. A great restaurant. Thank you so much. It is such a big, distinct flavor on mackerel. Yes. So what did you use to counter that? I did a pickle on the pieces of radish you see. Beautiful balance. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much. Great dish. <laughs> this dish is me on a plate because it's cooking techniques that I know and love. I made a Thai-style fried red mullet with a fish dipping sauce and a papaya and carrot slaw. And what was the biggest challenge in you pulling this dish off? The biggest challenge was probably the fact that I only have one fish. One chance to get it right. Correct. Red mullet is a delicate, sweet, gentle fish. I'm a little surprised that you put it up against such a, a big, almost fiery sauce. It's almost counterintuitive. Oh. But it works. Thank you, Chef. Sweet, acidic, but very complimentary. And what I see here 
is nothing short of a love affair with food. That's the Veronica that we want to see. Thank you, Chef. This is typical Asian, using every single part of the fish. You make good use of the bone, and I'm just gonna dig into that. This is exactly how I would have done it. I am so happy to see you finally bring out the Asian in your cooking. I'm happy to see you happy. <laughs> well done. Thank you. the judges will join the VIP guests to sample the first course of sharing platters. The red team sliced beets with ricotta, white asparagus, and fennel salad. And the blue team's beet tartare with watermelon, goat cheese, and balsamic reduction. Bon appetit, everyone. Okay. Please help yourselves. Thank you. Kim, you do the honors. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. So Mel, you're having the blue team's beet carpaccio sitting on the watermelon. The beet's very earthy, and yet you get a little hint of summer with the watermelon. It's really interesting flavor. This is delicious. So that's a thumbs up for you? Thumbs up. I love the blue team. I love the way they did it, like the layer, the color, just came together so beautifully. Really, like one of Kim's collections. <laughs> just, just perfectly. <laughs> now this one, on the other hand, on the red team, looked a little disheveled. Maybe more like a collection I would do. No. <laughs> okay, guys, next course is our seafood, the crab roll. Jeremy is a sushi expert, so he's pretty much in charge of the entire second course. How about your soy? Do you want that in a squeeze bottle as well? Yes, please. I'm feeling a lot of pressure. I need to execute it perfectly. Hi there, Jeremy. Can you just walk me through the dish that you're about to serve up next? It's a crab sushi roll with caviar and spicy mayo. I'm getting a sense that you're a little bit rattled. I don't have a sushi mat. Do you think that should have been taken into account before you did the menu? Yeah, probably. It's up there. Good I'm luck. I've never done this without a mat yeah, before. Why didn't we think of this first? Guys, we're winning this. I'm not bleeding for nothing. For our seafood course, we decide to do a crab cake with a couscous and hummus underneath. Veronica, what do you think about the brown on the crab cake? Oh, the brown looks gorgeous. Veronica is a very strong leader, and she's a woman that knows what she wants. Do a smear. Do a vertical-ish couscous. But she should be using Matthew more because Matthew is great at plating. This is Veronica's vision. It's not elegant. What's going to happen to the hummus? What's going to happen to the couscous when they're taking it out? It's going to go everywhere. You don't want fashionable people's clothes to get dirty. Jeremy has managed to roll out his sushi without a mat, but it's a slow process. How many more rolls do I need to do? Three more. We don't have enough of the one with the nori on the outside. The vision for the sushi rolls is to have rice on the outside, nori strip on top, just like the white and black dress that I saw on the runway. You need more? How many more? One more, one more. Guys, guys, come on, one more. I literally rolled a sushi roll in like 20 seconds. Come on, we can do this. Come on, come on, come on. It's just a mad scramble. Grab him, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. This is looking good. So, on the red platter, they're serving up crab cakes with couscous sitting on some freshly made hummus. And from the blue team, they have made a crab sushi roll with spicy mayo. Bon appétit, everyone. Help yourselves. What do you think, Lainey? When I saw the blue team was serving sushi, I'm from Vancouver. You better impress me, because the world's best sushi, I think, is in Vancouver. It's really good. That sushi really captured the stripe of the dress and of, of, uh, of Kim's uh, aesthetic. I thought the red team, this couscous on top of the crab cake with the capers, very salty. Looks like a pile. 
And I prefer a little more finesse on a plate. You want to eat it with your eyes. This is an international group of performers. It has to be flavors, I think, from all over the world. Lots of punchy things like ginger, lime leaves, coriander, fresh, fresh flavors. Good hearty grains, delicious pasta salad using a real variety of wonderful fresh vegetables. I think it's all about a balanced diet. Okay, people, move quick. I want everything prepped. Did everybody hear me? Yes, yes. yes. You hear Lynn shouting out those orders already? She knows that organization is absolutely essential. And remember, I want to taste everything before you put anything in it. Yes, Lynn. Everything is according to Lynn's taste and preference. Is that enough onions to start the meal product? You want more? No, that's fine. That's fine? Okay. What do I need? Andrew, as a captain, is a little frantic. Whoa, whoa. Going like, ooh, it's insane. Oh, yeah. Do we need this other pot of water? No. Okay, I've hooked up my other pot. I need to do two pots separately. Wait, wait, uh... Andrew, how are you? Oh, I'm a Russian chef. I'll give you a little bit of advice, because I'm just watching what's happening here. There's no question you're a great cook, right? Thank you. I think if you continue at this pace, you're yeah. going to crash and burn here. Okay. Lead your team. Give them clear direction. Okay. So you're making soup? Yes. How are you going to serve soup without a bowl? And I look around. Oh, my God. Guys, do we know where we're putting the soup in? My mind is just, like, defeated. What can we make from cauliflower soup? I happen to remember seeing a bag of cornmeal. And my mind goes polenta. We're doing creamy cauliflower polenta now. Problem instantly solved. Once this starts getting thick, we're going to turn it down, OK? This is how I want the brochettes, people. I'm nervous about Lynn's leadership. She has a military background. She can be dictatorial. Please don't cross-contaminate the proteins with the vegetables. OK, Jen, move it. I'm going as fast as I possibly can. Use the mandolin. I can't work this damn thing. I was faster just using a freaking knife. Go back. Go back. Turn off. Push it in. All I hear in my head right now, use the mandolin! Use the mandolin! Everybody by now should know how to use a mandolin. I know. Hey, I don't want any lip service. More chopping and less talking, OK, please? Do you want to do it yourself? Pardon me? Jennifer, you look upset. I'm just frustrated. I'm trying to cut these as fast as I can. I was trying to use the mandolin. They were coming up all just weird shapes and stuff. Like, what the hell? Why are you crying? You're supposed to be able to do this. Lynn, are you telling her to use the mandolin? Yes, I was. Honestly, I don't think it's a big deal. If she didn't know how to use it, she can cut it any way she wants. As long as you get it cut, that's fine. A peaceful kitchen is always an efficient kitchen. Yes, chef. I guess I was too hard on her. Right now, I'm feeling so guilty that Jennifer's crying. I figured she could handle it, apparently not. Guys, I hear fighting over there. That's good for us. Let's start grilling. Chicken's ready to go. It's cold as hell out. We're having a lot of trouble getting some good heat on these grills. Then the chicken sticks to it. The chicken's going to be underdone. I want these really hot, OK? John is a grill master. I picked John for this reason. All I could find was this tin foil and two hotel pans. So stack the hotel pans up, wrap the tin foil around it, and boom, you got an oven. This is smart. Yeah, it's keeping all the heat inside. That is Big John's idea. This looks really nice. As the red team gets their grill problems under control, the blue team's grill problems are just beginning. Okay, I need more space. A little more space, guys, if you can handle it. I get all my pans ready to sear my cot, and they're not getting hot enough. You should be smoking. Lynn, I need your help. OK, but now they're doing good? No, they're not. If, if they wouldn't stop dropping in temperature, I'd be really, really good. This is worse. Put them in a pan and put them in the oven. OK, there's no more screwing around, like, really. Voices are getting high. I told you guys to get this off the grill and put it on the fryers a while ago. The morale in the kitchen is getting tense. These things are rough. Okay, I'll keep cooking it. You go, 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 do your stuff. I'm going to need the oven for my fish, eh? Going to have to share. There are definitely some cracks in the foundation on Lynn's team. No communication. Don't waste space on this with the orzo. Fingers crossed, they'll be able to pull it off. Everything that's supposed to be working is not working. And there's like a bunch of wasps. They're in my chicken. They're in my sauce. 
If I just start going at him with a towel, the parsley has to be chopped. It doesn't go in the mirror pool. It actually goes. I got the bugger. I don't have time to deal with loss right now. As the blue team struggles, the Cirque du Soleil rehearsal is close to breaking for lunch. Ten minutes! We gotta pull this together, so let's double time, double time. Yes, Captain. Okay, let's go. This is your famous uh, creamy cauliflower polenta. Hmm. You know what would be an amazing combination? What do you think, sir? A little Reggiano, some cheddar, perhaps? I've got my cheese on standby right over here, chef. Good luck. Can I take a quick look? You happy with the way it's turned out? Because the key with cod, you want to keep it nice and moist, right? Yes. I think it's light, it's fresh. The sauce is very good. That moisture there will help keep it, the fish nice and moist, that's for sure. So we need to start bringing the thing. Guys, don't forget, I need serving spoons. OK, let's go, move it. This is the extra fish. Check if we have anything. Just grab cilantro or something for garnish. Why are the stems even in here? That's yeah. for the falafel. So, Alb and Michael, what are you looking for at this point? Well, definitely they should be tasting everything, just to make sure that the taste is there. Orzo's way low on salt has no acid. This needs to change. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, guys. This is not good enough. Not good enough. Kristen! What? Grab four lemons and a knife. I have a massive orzo pasta salad that I cannot serve to serve to away. I don't have time for this. Blue team, red team, the cast and crew of Cirque du Soleil arriving. Service starts now. I'm thinking we're screwed. We're going down. Pressure test. Yeah, let's go there. Red team, let's go! The cast and crew will sample the red team's international buffet of Mexican chicken, Asian cod, orzo pasta salad, vegetarian falafel, and cauliflower polenta. So we've uh, tried to keep the calories down in the polenta as much as possible so you can still reach those uh, death-defying heights later tonight. They will also try the blue team's healthy menu of chicken brochettes, citrus cod, vegetarian curry, couscous, and green beans with mixed peppers. Blue's the best! Salut! Bon appétit. Which one's better, this one or this one? The blue. I prefer the red because it's more risky, more fun. I hope you enjoy. I really like blue plate, very healthy food. How about you? I really love the cut and the pollen top wow. from the red meat. The chicken on the red is a little dry. The chicken on the blue plate, I really like the texture of it. I take the blue one and couscous is perfect made and the beans, it's great here. That speaks volumes, doesn't it? Yeah. An empty plate, absolutely. The blue team I just found was really bland. Like, there wasn't much to it. The reds, the sides are amazing. The polenta is really good, and so is the orzo. And that's for the fish on the red team. They served everybody. We serve our last person. Hi, guys, we're done. And it was like rush of calm and excitement and pride roll over us.